Hello, I'm Jim Armbruster, the Citizen Science Coordinator at the Vermont Institute of Natural Science. I'm here today with Kelly Stetner from the Black River Action Team, and today we're going to learn all about dragonflies in a citizen science project that you can participate in. So Kelly, tell us all about dragonfly detectives. Well, everybody knows what a dragonfly is. You've seen them zipping and zooming, hovering, zigzagging, flying backwards. But dragonflies don't actually start out with wings. So the adult female lays her eggs in the water or near the water. The larvae hatch out and they spend many weeks to several years in the water, depending on the species. They outgrow their skins, they get a little bigger, and then by the time that last baby skin is just too tight and they're ready to be an adult, they climb out of the water, dry off that exoskeleton, unzip it like you take your jacket off at the end of the day, they leave it behind as they unpack their wings, unroll that tail, pump everything full of fluid, and then they fly off. And they leave those little exoskeletons, they're called exuviae, I love that, exuviae. They leave the, the exuviae behind, and people like me like to find those and collect them. Because we can actually identify those to family, usually genus, sometimes species, if I have a lot of expert help. And we can learn more about their ecosystem, we can learn more about how they use um, the habitat, what kind of habitat needs they have. And besides, it's a lot of fun to go on safari looking for these little things. So that does sound like a lot of fun, but why is that important? Well, dragonflies as larvae, obviously they spend a lot of time in the water and in the sediment at the bottom of whatever water body they're in. So they bioaccumulate sometimes what they're, what, what's in the sediment that they're in. So it could be anything from methyl mercury to uh, other heavy metals. It could just be that we can use them as indicators of how healthy that water is. And if we compare the exuviae we find with the adults we see flying around at places like Vins, we can get a sense of how they're using the ecosystem, what their habitat needs are, get a sense of the water quality in the area, how we can take better care of the forests because they actually use those trees. We're going to be hanging out on the forest canopy walk. That's this right, too. yes. We're going to definitely be out on the canopy walk looking for dragonflies. So I think the most important part of all this is how is people can participate themselves and how is that possible? Well, people can actually do this within a few miles of their own home. Um, if you know you've got a, a pond, you've got a lake, you've got a river bank that's accessible, um, you've got a wetland that you like to go visit, a pond like Dewey's Pond, um, and you can just take a few pieces of really simple equipment that you have around the house, go out and explore. Basically the biggest thing is to take your time. Uh, these little exuviae aren't going to run away from you, they're not going to move, they're not alive, they're no different than a sweatshirt on the floor, um, but they are camouflaged. Sometimes they're hidden behind a blade of grass, sometimes they are, you know, they'll crawl out of the mud, they'll be on a bridge abutment, they could be 5, 6, 10, 20 feet up off, off the surface of the water. Uh, they might be hanging out in the mud, they might be in a bundle of twigs on the, on the riverbank, in the moss. Um, so taking your time to start to recognize, and we'll take a look at what, what they look like. Um, there's a lot of different body styles or floor plans, I, a friend of mine calls them. Um, so knowing what you're looking for and letting your eyes settle as you explore 10 or 20 feet of shoreline. You're not going to be out for an entire day looking for several hours on, a, on an excursion, but plan a couple of hours and just explore a 20 or 40 foot section of shoreline. And you can also join VINS this summer because you guys are going to be doing some adult dragonfly photography. Right. That, that, we're not going to collect adult dragonflies, but we're going to collect right. photos of them. Yes, exactly. Um, and I'll, I'll go through the, the ID book so that you can get a sense that the best photographs we're going to be finding are of the dragonfly's back or its side. Preferably one of each, but dragonflies aren't the best models. Get a picture of whatever you can. Exactly, before they zip away, yes, right? Exactly. in focus is best, yes. but the markings on their backs and their sides help, them, help us identify them better. Um, and as for the exuviae, if you want a, a, an up close and personal but socially distant opportunity <laughs> to participate, we're going to be at Dewey's Pond. Uh, right here. Yeah. Well, Vins will be there as well. We'll both be helping out uh, teaching people how to look for these dragonflies, these exuviae. So, sounds like yep. a lot of fun coming up this weekend. Yep, and there is an, um, an event registration because we're trying to limit it to a certain number of people. If you want to do it by boat, you can battle some lily pads. You can also work on the shore yourself. You don't have to have anything more than river shoes or waders, old sneakers that it's okay to get them wet. 
Um, we will have containers to give to you to use, and then you drop it off when you're done. Uh, we, will, we will collect all your exuviae when you're done, and if you catch photos of things, um, my email address is uh, going to be on the screen someplace as well. So you can give us a, give us a holler and send us your photos. I'm going to upload those to iNaturalist. We have a Dragonfly Detectives project. Um, and all of those are going to be compiled for experts to jump onto because this is not just fun day in the in the field for, for, for families. It's a lot more than that too. We are actually hoping to build a foundation of which dragonflies are in our area so that other researchers can take that information and build on it. They may have much, a much deeper dive they want to do on dragonflies and we're hoping to build that foundation and have that database ready to go. That's great. So anybody can be a scientist. Uh, citizen yes. science is a great thing to get involved with and I think we should go out and look for some Exuvier, right? That let's, sounds let's great. Let's get some let's gear get some, and... Get some gear. Let's go. Awesome. So when you're out hunting for Exuvier, you want to wear your good river shoes or waders. You want to have some very expensive specialized equipment to collect these little guys. This is a great excuse for me to eat gelato. <laughs> but essentially you want a, a clear plastic, or mostly clear plastic, container with a screw top lid. That way you can put your little guys in there, screw it together, and then if you accidentally drop it in the water, it's gonna float, and you'll be able to see it pretty easily. Um, you also wanna have some kind of little strips of paper. You wanna make a note of your name, phone number would be great, or email where you are, Dewey's Pond, Queechee, Vermont, the date that you're out, doesn't really matter what time, and then uh, slide that little slip of paper into your container. Um, I would do that first because these guys are really delicate. It's okay if a, a leg breaks off or you know gets a little torn, but we want them mostly intact so that we can do some really good identification. Um, I put it all in a little handy dandy backpack that I bring with me. And since they're all empty, it's pretty lightweight. Drinking water, make sure you bring your drinking water. I have field guides that I bring with me, but I usually leave them in the car because it's just so much easier and more fun to go out, explore, let your eyes settle, and see what you can find. So luckily we picked such a great spot. We've already found an exuvia. And when you find an exuvia, you'll take your container and you'll go into the water and collect it. So here we go. So we're going to grab it. Put it right in our container. So this is what the exuviae will look like in your hand. And remember they are fragile. They're not living, they're just the shed exoskeleton, but you can see how delicate they are and how they could blow right away in a, in a little breeze. So we'll take a good look at it and then we'll put it right back in its container. So that was a lot of fun, Kelly. Nice. I've got my jar full of exuvia here and uh, can't wait to do this again. So tell us about that event on Sunday. Awesome, we hope to see folks here at Dewey's Pond on Sunday the 28th. It's a free event. We ask that you pre-register and the Eventbrite link is in the program details. Um, it is, again, free, family friendly. Please don't bring your dog. They're gonna trot upon the little exuvia. Not a good idea at this time, but uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. till noon. You can bring your kayak your, or canoe or you can work on foot. Spend a little time, spend the whole time. We're happy to have you and we hope to see a lot of yeah. folks. See you here.